After 20 minutes, I find some action going on around the stump and it's peculiar, so I need to zoom in. And the way these videos work is you need to stop videoing and then zoom in or zoom out and start videoing again. So I do that, but now I've lost the signature and I'm looking left and right and everything's so wobbly because the focus is so narrow and it's horrible until I find this heat signature and I just make myself still. This is what I see. Two giant creatures emerge from the foliage and one is bending down to pick up something. I immediately let the team know what I'm seeing, something human-like and big in the bushes. I'm also trying now, because it's filled up my monitor, to zoom back in the excitement I forgot you need to switch off. So the button I'm pressing now doesn't zoom back, it just cascades through all these filters and it's frustrating. And I finally get it back onto the iron setting and then I'm going to zoom out because I can't see much. And I stop. And the same time I stop, Gary says, I'm coming up to you, mate. And whatever they were, they looked in Gary's direction and just took off. And that was it. There wasn't much more to get. And I really wish that I'd just held my nerve a bit and trusted that the camera was going to capture whatever it was and not try to zoom back out. Very frustrating. It's time to revisit the expedition location where Buck had taken the footage of our two or three visitors during the night try to get some size reference and go over a few missed details from the expedition video. Because the night was so dark under the treed canopy and we weren't totally familiar with the area, there's a little ambiguity about the exact location Buck was standing and which tree they arrived at from behind. With instructions from Buck and analysing the two most logical areas, it wasn't long before I found where Buck was standing and where the two large yowies appeared from behind the tree. Right in the middle of that, right? So that's what would have blocked him or them. I'm thinking. So I don't think you were in the right position. I don't, I'm not sure if you turned in. I don't think you were in the right position. Right. I reckon that's it. Now, the top of those fonds there are about nine that's foot. That's what was blocking. Eight, nine foot. Okay, so height reference, well, <laughs> if that was the foliage that was doing the blocking there, uh, I would estimate that to be about, it would have to be, the thing up there, it would have to be between eight and nine feet. Right, so this is the first Yowie that Buck was filming. As I said before, it's doing what Yowies do. They will hug a tree, pretend to be a tree, uh, day or night. This one here, he's hugging the tree so he blends in so Buck can't see him. Being night time, I don't believe he would have thought that Buck could have seen him, but he's doing it anyway. You can see there, that's his face. There's no immediate hair on the face, so therefore he's leaving more of a heat signature. He has his arm around the tree here. There'll be his face here. There's the hand. There'll be less hair on the elbow. The other hand on the other side, coming around from the other side, that's the lower torso. Again, there's the, the face. And 
Now is directly behind the tree or stump. Must be a stump. Here we have again, now he's looking directly at Buck. You can see that the there's less hair on the immediate shoulder blade there. Giving more of a heat source. Again, the elbow, the point of the elbow and the hand, lower torso. Looking directly at Buck. Again, there's the heat signatures. So at this stage, Buck was very unclear what he was looking at. He wasn't totally sure. It wasn't until uh, the two stars of our show turn up. Now, whether this is one of those two, I don't know. Perhaps there's three out there. But the next lot of footage that we show is about 20 minutes later. So here we go. Here's our two stars. Out he comes. Now he bends down. He bends down and he's picking something up, right? So arms extended. Here comes the second one from behind the tree. So there's a big tree here and there's a lot of foliage, big fronds all around here, which you saw earlier. So he's got arm extended, he's picking something up. The other turns up, looking forward. Now base camp's over in this direction. This is the blue, the blue red. Not a great setting, I, I don't like that one. And also remember that Buck's trying to zoom. Instead of uh, zooming, he's, he's hitting the, uh, the colour change. There we go, white hot. Comes out for the second time. Bends over. Picks something up. And here, I'll just pause this for a sec. This is the tree. This is the big tree. Here are the fronds. The head height is roughly about here. Now we measured these to be you know, roughly about eight feet high. And there's the fronds. And that's roughly where they would have been. I don't know what he was picking up. I, I, I walked around there, there was nothing that was obvious. And I don't think, well, he wasn't putting a stick in the ground because we would have found that. Now we go to colour mode, which is also very good. So now you can see the one behind, that's, the, that's his back, his shoulders, um, he's quite broad, standing head. Uh, now he's looking, he's covering this one's back. He's looking over this way, base camp's over this way. And uh, they know there's humans in the area because we're playing music, we're playing classical music, which is interesting because our report, our witness audio report from Cat Eye, our witness was playing classical music also. Another uh, observation that Buck made was that they made no noise when they entered, made no noise when they left. Now, if, if Buck wasn't just randomly panning around, we wouldn't have seen this. Because Buck didn't know they were there, because again, they made no noise. Right, okay. So, there we have roughly about the eight foot mark. Here's the tree, then you can see the tree here coming straight up the centre of him. So he, his, I guess his nose and his chin would have been around about here. Top of his head, probably up around here. So now he would have been nine feet, maybe 10, somewhere in that vicinity. The other one was standing over here, a bit behind, looking this direction. And you can see where his, his legs were a little exposed coming down behind these leaves these fronds here and his foot was down just underneath this part so his shoulder shoulders would have come out around 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 here and then you see these leaves which would have been all all this covering
You can see how the, the head sits directly on the shoulders here as well. It's very broad. As he turns around and you can see face, here's a an enlargement buck did. And you can see the surgical crest of the skull coming directly backwards, sloping backwards. Big eye ridges, you have know, sunken eyes, and more of a protruding type of snout here. Looking down just before he reaches out and picks up whatever he was picking up. Tell me what you always do, whatever that is. And we'll go for a size comparison again. Buck's done some images for us. That's him standing there with the tree. Dead center. Okay, here's our eight foot mark. Now, if we place Gary at the eight foot mark, ah, oh, bottom of the feet, bottom of the feet. The Shannon. He's about six foot. They're both about six foot. That's me. I'm nine foot. And there's. The other star of the show, Buck, about six foot. So you can see the size comparison in the shoulders. And uh, a lot of people said, oh, are you sure it's not Gary? Well, here's Gary and here's uh, this thing. They look completely different. If we put, yeah, Gary in front, and it's size, sizing Gary up to try and make him the same size. Again, yeah, there's, there's no comparison. So it was about at this point where they noticed Gary coming and they turned and they left. This is the back side of the tree. This is where they would have been standing. Face looking that way, that's where Buck was down there. They would have been just here. One facing to my left, bending down, picking something up. And the other one standing just here, looking in the other direction, that way. Just getting back to this footage again. You can see the noggin here and there's another one there with the branches splice out both ways. Now I presume that this one here is that and this dark patch here will be this one. So that means it must be a pretty serious height if that's eight foot. Some people will be asking this footage here that we showed earlier, what is that? Well, we don't know, but we do know this is one of the reasons natives of every single continent every country say this is why you don't walk alone in the bush by yourself at night and here we go again it's part of the same footage that the filmer of all things buck managed to take just prior to the images you saw earlier in the morning again the filmer of all things uh took this photo and you can see that there's some sort of anomaly in the background there. And when he enlarged it, yeah, looks like a face, but it could be pareidolia. The problem is that here is this tree here and it's blocking the tree and it's behind the foliage. But I will note that this color over this side is very similar to this. I'll also note that when we went back, few days later that this wasn't there we could confirm that so we don't really know what that was but i i sort of err on the side of pareidolia the next piece of footage is again another world first back to the topic of thermal cameras this is a fleur t640 and it's the weapon of choice for researcher angela ashton 
and a serious piece of equipment costing over 30000 US. Angela is a close friend of mine and long-term colleague. She was researching the Holy Springs National Park, Mississippi, at 4.30am. Then with the camera in the black and white setting, she saw two Bigfoot in the tree line about 100 yards away. Upon seeing her, one disappeared running in a zigzag pattern, while another did what Bigfoot and Yowies do. It hugged a tree to disguise itself so it couldn't be seen. Or so it thought. When Angela first showed me this image, I was staggered. I was amazed. This, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the best still thermal images in the world. Now, you can see here in the right-hand image, and I'm still just shaking my head because it doesn't matter how many times I see this image, it never gets old. And uh, the thing is that Angela has never shared it publicly with anyone. Let's go into detail with this. Now, you can see that it's doing, like I've always said, what they do. They'll hug a tree because they'll blend. And at night time, you won't see them, generally ready brown, matching in with the bark of the tree. Arm um, around, low torso, which you hear about, shorter legs, longer arms. But then we come up to the facial features here, and you'll see the sagittal crest, as we saw before in our footage as well, very similar. You have the pronounced eye ridges, which we saw in our footage, although this is far more detailed, but then again, yeah, I mean, this is a $30,000 camera. You have the pronounced eye ridges, the deep sunken eyes. You can see it all as well as I can. I don't think there's any reason to go into detail about it because it's so clean and obvious. As far as I'm concerned, this image is as good or better than a daylight image. And the reason being, you can get these definitive outlines of the face. If this was a daytime image, I doubt you'd get that clarity. This would have to be my favourite photo of all time. I'm sure you agree. Well, that wraps up today's footage. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learnt something from it. I was planning on touching on the infrared spectrum, of why we believe that these things can see infrared, and they can, but we've run out of time. 